what are we going to look at today, guys? Well, we are going to look at a knife that truly could have been so much better. It could have been awesome, but it isn't. It's okay, but it's not great. It is the Spider Co. Hanan designed by Brad Southerd. It is an okay knife, but it does have a bunch of stuff that just make it a little less than it could have been which just typically is a thing with Spider Co. So you guys know what time it is. We're gonna turn this around and take a look at it from above. But first, you guys turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. channel mascot you've been seeing him in a lot of the uh shorts he he lives up here with mr broccoli skull at any rate guys so this is that spider co hanan designed by brad southerd and done by spider co um this is done in 20 cpm uh s30v titanium and g10 and this is done in their tai chung taiwan plant now i am going to go ahead and throw over here a spec sheet, but we are going to look at a few of the specs on their own. But as you can see, that's over here on the right. Um, so this knife came to me from uh, Sharif Manganis over at Manganis Steel. It was in a package of stuff he sent me. It was a gift. And I, I was kind of on the fence about how I felt about it at first. Now, this isn't a compression lock. I like Spider Coast compression lock, lock, but this one, we're going to talk about the good things about this knife first, but this, this should have been done in a different fashion, not as a flipper. Uh, I would have been much happier with a larger spidey hole and some thumb studs. But let's talk about the good things about this knife. This, I, I got to give Spider Coast props when they get stuff right. This is done incredibly well. You got a reversible pocket clip, single point that doesn't move. It's milled out nice and deep into that into that G10. Um, there's no transitions that you can even feel anywhere. Hardware is set and recessed nicely. The pocket clip is not uncomfortable. It is really stiff, but it's not difficult to get in and out of pocket. Here, I'm wearing track pants. It's a little tight in jeans. You can hear it again on track pants. You can hear it's a little bit tight. It is really stiff, um, but like I said, Everything fits up and up to and touching nice and clean. There's no gaps in any of that. Um, the blade sticks up a little bit proud. If you happen to get your finger down in there, you can kind of touch it, but it doesn't stick out. It's just real close on that, as you can see. Um, the spine on this has been crowned really well. There's no uh, sharp spots, hot spots. The jimping is kind of, it's kind of softened, but it actually is not bad jimping. Um, you can see, I zoomed in so you guys can see this. It does run on bearings, as you can see. Um, and there is your back lock here, this little compression lock. So this knife was done really, really well. Um, the action on it, if you get it right, is pretty good. It's got really smooth action and the blade shape is almost like a baby tiny kukri. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the stuff that they really could have done better. This needed, this absolutely needs a sharpening choil. I would say that this is one of those knives that needs a sharpening choil because you can see where it got sharpened before, clear up into here. It is not great. Um, the compression lock that's on it, when you get into it, let's see if I can catch it on camera. Let me do this here. Let's zoom in ever so slightly. So when you flip it, what happens is your finger gets down in and it doesn't lock out all the way. Your finger winds up getting pinched down in here a little bit. Is it painful? No, but it doesn't lock out all the way until you take your finger out. And I will say once it's locked, beautiful, beautiful lock up. Um, the handle, now let's, let's put it in perspective. These knives are almost exactly the same size. This knife is much more comfortable. This is that Riat made Oxworks Osprey, and it's really comfortable in hand. This tries to be big knife form factor in a small knife, and that's not going to work for a lot of people. 
it kind of feels like my hand is put in an awkward position. You can kind of get used to it, but it kind of jams your hand, especially if you have large hands, jams your hand in here up against the flipper. Uh, it is really comfortable though, because there is no lock bar. So it's a lot like a liner lock, which is another way they should have went with this. Like instead of the compression lock, as much as I like the compression lock, a liner lock, you wouldn't have that issue where your finger winds up getting stuck down in there. Another thing that they could have done, do it as, do it as a compression lock, but with a thumb stud or a larger finger aperture, because you have to really pay attention. Like you cannot, you cannot think that you're really going to be able to push that out with just push button. You have to late switch this. You got to come off of here, which is what I'm pretty sure what that little dimple for is for and really get behind it. Now, when you do that, if you've got sensitive fingers, you're going to drag your finger right along that compression lock, but it, it's just a very soft action. It's smooth but it's really soft action. It does have a cool sound to it. Sometimes it'll ping when it closes. Um, and like I said, aesthetically, this thing is great. The last thing that I would say, the blade stock is really thick and the behind the edge is really thick. So like I said, we're gonna look at the weight because this isn't a heavy knife. You can see it's really well made. A lot of G10, the titanium is pretty well done. They've done some some lightening and milling on this to lighten the load. But let's go ahead and bring the scale in and look at the weight and then we'll look at the blade stock thickness and the behind the edge. All right, let's go ahead and get the weight on this. Let's see, what did we use last time? Last, we'll go ahead and do grams. For those of you who don't do freedom units, you are looking at 80 grams. It is not real heavy in ounces, two and seven eighths ounces. So. For comparison, this knife is right about the same size, three and one eighth. This is a fairly light knife. These knives are really similar, bolster and G10. So let's go ahead and get the scale out of the way and bring in the calipers and look at blade stock thickness and behind the edge thickness. As I got my calipers all zeroed out with my feeler gauge, made sure that it's reading. Okay, so let's look at the blade stock thickness on this. Blade stock thickness on this for a small knife is a little thick. It's 0.13-ish on this. 0.13, it's just about 1.3 exactly. But behind the edge thickness on this is where it's really gonna, get right behind the edge. 0.35, am I right behind the edge? No, I'm actually on the edge. Let's get behind the actual edge. 0 0.0, four, three, five, right behind the edge on this. Now I will say this thing is a nice knife. It's a lot of fun, but she's not a slicer. This is a very thick, very thick knife. So I would say that that would be my biggest thing right there. It's attractive aesthetically. It's well built, but it uses thick blade stock. And, and just for case in point, they used pretty thick blade stock on this. This is actually way thicker, but they did it in a hollow grind. So, you know, if you're gonna do a small knife, and I got so used to messing with that when I was looking for the back lock on this one. If you're, if you're gonna do a small knife, you gotta do some thinner blade stock or do it in a fashion where you're grinding it a lot thinner. I'm really kind of disappointed in some of these features because Brad Southerd is just such a well-known, well-renowned knife maker that, that makes such good knives that some of these things would be things that I would think he wouldn't have wanted in his knife. Um, let's do some size comparisons. I have some knives that are similar in size, so you can see. As we said, we have the Oxworks Osprey, um, really similar in size. And you, I think that this is a much more functional knife. As much as I do enjoy this knife and it's fun, I think that this would be a better choice. So there you go, there's your first one, the Oxworks. Here you go with your another small gentleman's folder, the CGRB Rhea, really similar, much more comfortable. I think that on a bigger knife, this handle would have worked, but these two much more comfortable. And then let's see here, just so you can see it in size comparison, this is the PMP Big Boy. So, you know, you guys saw your spec sheet. This is not a big knife. I, I think that they tried to give a big knife design in a small knife and it just really didn't work. So yeah, I, I'm gonna say that this knife could have been, this is, this is in my opinion, hang on, so let me get these out of the way. 
what I was saying is I think that they could have they could have made this a little bit larger, done this in a different fashion, and it would have been a lot better. This is one of those knives that just they just kind of missed the mark. Like they they were on to something with this. Because it is striking. It's an attract. They were onto something and they just kind of missed the mark. If if you're like if you're like me, you got really big hands, it's just not real comfortable in hand. Um, the compression lock on it for closing, it's great. It's the opening, you know, you wind up with your finger getting pinched. There's just so many things they could have done so much better. And I just kind of wish that they had because I do like this knife. I would like to see a larger version of this knife. An XL version of this, I think would be amazing. But like I said, until they rectify this, it's going to be hard for a lot of people to sharpen. You're going to be ruining the aesthetics of your blade, you can see, by getting up in there. Um, and it's, it's really going to limit. And a lot of people don't have the cap capability to sharpen this, especially something this small. I have the tools for it, but I honestly think that you would have a hard time with it. So, um, yeah, guys, I not, I don't want to, I don't want to run this to be too long. Um, it, it's, it's just a knife that, man, I wish they had done this. I could, I could really get behind and dig this. Like I like it now. So imagine if they had done some of those things that I said, just a few of them, how much more I would like it. So guys, that's about it on this one. Uh, let's turn this around, do some final thoughts and get you guys on about your day. Like I said, guys, just a couple small things could have made this knife so much better. Don't get me wrong. This is a spider co. I actually really do like even the little flaws with it do not detract from it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I do like this knife and I appreciate it. It was a gift from Sharif Manganis. Uh, I believe I mentioned that at the tabletop. But yeah, just one of those little things that it could have been great. And they just missed the mark a little bit. So guys, if you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the content, give it a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's just like I say, as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. Helps push the channel up the algorithm, but hit the bell icon and make sure you've got notifications turned on on your device. Um, other ways you can support the channel, if you want to do it financially, there's a bunch of ways down in the description. I have a membership that gets you in on a bunch of different benefits based on tier. Pick the tier that suits you best, but remember, everyone gets access to my Gilded server and everyone saves $5 off on my sharpening service. And if you're a premium tier member, you get access to a tutorial series that I've built that is only available to the premium tier paying members. Other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below, whole long list of things that I've got recommended knives, stones, tools, all kinds of stuff. So check that out. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. It just, they give me a little bit for bringing those items to you. And the final ways I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. I've set up a coupon code that works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. And that coupon code is crazy sharp, capital C, capital S, crazy sharp, saves you 10% at checkout. And if you take a picture of you wearing my merchandise, I will put it in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.